Anyone interested in quantum computing would have definitely heard about Shor's factoring algorithm. It is one of the few textbook quantum algorithms that has been a rare example of quantum computational benefit. In other words, the technique can compute something quantum that would be difficult and time consuming to compute conventionally. In reality, this approach can compute something theoretically impossible to achieve at any reasonable scale using classical methods. Hello and welcome back to QuantumFi. In today's video, we'll explain Shor's algorithm in quantum computing. So let's get started. Mathematicians have long struggled to factor in huge numbers. It is simple to multiply two numbers and obtain the product. However, breaking down the product into its constituent parts is time consuming. Even with more powerful and faster computers, the challenge of factoring huge integers has not been solved. However, in 1994, American mathematician Peter Shor developed an algorithm for quantum computers that could be a game changer in factoring huge integers. Shor's factoring algorithm is one of the most effective factorization methods. This algorithm is popular because, with enough developments in quantum computation, it can be used to defeat encryption. Sounds confusing and contradictory, right? How is breaking encryption beneficial in quantum computing or even in general? We'll come back to that later. Shor's algorithm begins by selecting a random integer that is less than the number to be factored. The classic determined greatest common divisor of these two integers, the random number, and the target number is then used to see if the target number was mistakenly factored. For lesser numbers, this is an option. For bigger quantities, a supercomputer will be the least requirement. For numbers that are thought to be cryptographically secure, a quantum computer will be a must. The quantum computer's duty is to calculate the period of the number to be factored. The computation results indicate whether a fresh random integer should be examined or if the desired factors have been discovered. Once the target integer has been factored, the role of Shor's algorithm is completed. That's basically Shor's algorithm explained in a nutshell. At a high level, this entire process may appear pretty easy. And to be honest, on a high level, it is. However, explaining each stage in detail can be divided into a number of courses. Implementing the factorization method is hard and is only possible after finishing a brief lesson, but properly understanding it requires several hours of study. If you want a detailed video on how to learn in depth, then tell us in the comments. But what exactly is the hype? Our classical computers also can do superhuman math in seconds, right? Well, technically no. A classical algorithm is a step-by-step -step technique for problem solving in which each step or instruction may be executed on a traditional computer. It is a rule-based algorithm that can be precisely traced and determined using specific input. Classical algorithms make use of the objective functions first, and sometimes second, derivative. Direct search and stochastic techniques are intended for objective functions in which function derivatives are unavailable. But why Shor's algorithm is dangerous for modern computing? Shor's algorithm algorithm is a quantum algorithm that can factorize large numbers in polynomial time, which is exceptionally faster than the best known classical algorithms. This algorithm can potentially break public key cryptography schemes such as RSA, finite field Diffel-Hellman key exchange, and elliptic curve Diffel-Hellman key exchange. However, given the high error rates of contemporary quantum computers and too few qubits to use quantum error correction, laboratory demonstrations obtain correct results only in a fraction of attempts. Therefore, it is not yet practical to use Shor's algorithm to break RSA encryption. Nevertheless, Shor's algorithm has facilitated research on new crypto systems that are secure from quantum computers, collectively called post-quantum cryptography. The National Institute of Standards and Technology has announced the first four quantum-resistant cryptographic algorithms that are designed to withstand and the assault of a future quantum computer, which could potentially crack the security used to protect privacy in the digital systems we rely on every day, such as online banking and 
email software. The four selected encrypted algorithms will become part of NIST's post-quantum cryptographic standard, which is expected to be finalized in about two years. The first four algorithms NIST has announced for post-quantum cryptography are based on structured lattices and hash functions, two families of math problems that could defend a quantum computer's assault. The public key encryption and key establishment algorithm that will be standardized is Crystal's Kyber. The digital signatures that will be standardized are Crystal's Dilithium, Falcon, and Sphinx Plus. While multiple signature algorithms have been selected, NIST recommends Crystal's Dilithium as the primary algorithm to be implemented. These algorithms are designed to prevent encryption from being broken by a quantum computer using Shor's algorithm. Because Shor's algorithm can break many cryptographic schemes currently in use, the new standard will specify one or more quantum resistant algorithms, each for digital signatures, public key encryption, and the generation of cryptographic keys. So this was it for today, guys. Hit like if you enjoyed our video, comment down if you've heard about Shor's algorithm, and comment on which topic you want to see next on the channel. Subscribe to Get Quantified. Stay tuned as we'll be back soon with another important video. Till then, keep watching Quantify.